The following stories are true. Listener discretion is advised. If you like these stories and want to hear more, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Here is the first story. The dimly lit bar was buzzing with the usual mix of patrons. Laughter, clinking glasses, and the soft hum of conversation filled the air. I leaned against the worn wooden counter, wiping down a glass absentmindedly. My name is Sandy, and I'd been tending bar at the Twilight Lounge for years. It was a gritty dive, but it paid the bills. As the night wore on, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. A man at the far end of the bar, sitting alone, had been watching me intently all evening. His eyes, dark and unrelenting, never left me for long. He was tall, with unruly hair and a scruffy beard, wearing a leather jacket that seemed out of place in the warm, muggy night. I poured another drink, trying to brush off the uneasy feeling. Maybe he was just another lonely soul drowning his sorrows in cheap whiskey. But something about the way he looked at me sent shivers down my spine. Hours passed, and the bar slowly emptied out. The man, who had been nursing the same drink for hours, finally stood up. He paid his tab and started to make his way towards the exit. I breathed a sigh of relief, thinking I was finally free of his unsettling presence. However, as I finished wiping down the last glass and began to close up the bar, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I glanced out the window and saw him, lurking in the shadows, his eyes fixed on me. Panic surged through me, and I hurriedly locked the doors, praying that he would move on. I rushed through my closing duties, trying not to look outside, hoping he would disappear. Finally, I turned off the last light and headed for the back door. As I stepped into the dark alley, my heart sank. He was there waiting for me. Hey, Sandy, he said, his voice low and menacing. You did a great job tonight. I clenched my fists, trying to hide my fear. I'm closing up now, you need to leave. He stepped closer, his eyes glinting with an eerie intensity. I can't just leave, Sandy. I've been watching you for a long time. You fascinate me. I backed away slowly, my mind racing. I needed to get to my car, to safety. But he continued to advance, blocking my path. Who are you? I demanded, my voice trembling. He smiled, revealing a row of yellowed teeth. That doesn't matter. What matters is that I want to get to know you better, much better. My heart pounded in my chest as I fumbled for my phone, ready to dial 911. But he lunged at me, knocking the phone from my hand. I stumbled backward, falling to the ground. He was on top of me, pinning me down with a strength I couldn't match. Please, let me go, I begged, tears streaming down my face. He leaned in close, his hot breath on my neck, you smell so good, Sandy, I can't resist. In that moment, terror washed over me like a tidal wave. I knew I was in grave danger. I struggled with all my might, desperate to break free from his grip. With a burst of adrenaline, I managed to push him off and scramble to my feet. I sprinted towards my car, praying that I could reach it before he caught up. The parking lot seemed miles away, and I could hear his heavy footsteps behind me, growing closer with each passing second. I fumbled for my keys, my hands shaking uncontrollably. As I reached my car, I fumbled to unlock the door and threw myself inside, slamming it shut just as he reached me. He pounded on the window, his face contorted with rage. You can't escape me, Sandy. I'll find you. I peeled out of the parking lot, my heart racing and tears blurring my vision. I had to get away from him. I had to find help. But as I glanced in my rearview mirror, I saw his headlights behind me. He was following me. Panicking, I drove through the darkened streets, trying to lose him. I made quick, erratic turns, but he stayed on my tail, relentless. I knew I couldn't go home, couldn't lead him to my sanctuary. I needed to find a safe place, a haven where I could call the police. My mind raced as I weaved through the maze of streets. The minutes felt like hours, and the fear in my chest grew with each passing moment. Finally, I spotted a 24-hour gas station up ahead. It was my only chance. I pulled into the brightly lit lot, hoping that the presence of witnesses would deter him. I jumped out of my car, frantically waving my arms and screaming for help. The man pulled up behind me, his face hidden in the shadows of his car. He didn't get out. The gas station attendant rushed out, phone in hand, and called 911 as I explained the situation. But when the police arrived, 
the man was gone. They took my statement, and I provided a description of the man who had been stalking me. They promised to keep an eye out for him and advised me to stay with a friend or family member for the night. Shaken to my core, I called my best friend Lisa, and she agreed to let me stay with her. As I huddled on her couch, my mind replayed the night's horrifying events. Who was that man, and why was he so obsessed with me? I couldn't shake the feeling that my life had just taken a dark and disturbing turn, and I had no idea where it would lead next. Here is the second story. The relentless drip of rain outside matched the monotony of my afternoon shift at the cozy little coffee shop where I worked. I gazed through the streaked window, watching the world pass by as I idly stirred a latte for the umpteenth time that day. My name is Camila, and I've always found solace in the rhythmic hum of the espresso machine and the soothing aroma of freshly brewed coffee. But lately, something sinister had infiltrated my world. It all began a few weeks ago when I found the first note taped to the door of the coffee shop. At first glance, it seemed innocent enough, but the words sent a shiver down my spine. You make my coffee just the way I like it, Camilla. The message read. I brushed it off as an overly enthusiastic customer, someone perhaps infatuated with my latte art skills. Days turned into weeks and the notes kept appearing. Each one became increasingly unsettling. You're the cream in my coffee, Camilla, one declared, and another read. I watch you pour your heart into every cup. The cryptic messages left me on edge, my normally cheerful disposition replaced with a nagging sense of unease. I tried to discuss it with my coworkers, but they dismissed it as harmless admiration from a secret admirer. However, my gut told me otherwise. I decided to involve the manager, Mark, hoping he could help me figure out who was behind these creepy notes. He promised to keep an eye on the security footage, but assured me it was probably just an overzealous customer. One evening, after my shift had ended, I hurried back to my apartment. The relentless rain had soaked through my coat, and I longed for the warmth of my cozy home. As I approached my front door, I noticed something out of the ordinary. A strange black envelope taped to the wood, my heart pounded in my chest as I cautiously retrieved it. Inside the envelope was another note, but this one was different. The message was more personal and disturbing than any before. I know where you live, Camila, it read. Your apartment is as inviting as your coffee. I can't wait to see you again. My hands trembled as I read those chilling words. Panic welled up inside me, and I fumbled for my phone, dialing 911. I reported the threatening note and explained the situation to the dispatcher. They promised to send a patrol car by to check on me and advised me to stay inside until they arrived. Hours felt like an eternity as I waited for the police to arrive. Every creak of the floorboards and rustle of the wind outside sent shivers down my spine. When the officers finally knocked on my door, I welcomed their presence like a lifeline. They examined the note and took my statement, assuring me they would increase patrols in the area. Though their reassurances offered some comfort, the fear remained, a shadow that clung to my every step. The following days were a blur of anxiety and paranoia. I triple-checked the locks on my doors and windows, installed a security camera at my apartment's entrance, and constantly looked over my shoulder. The coffee shop had turned into a prison, my haven transformed into a place of dread. I had never felt so vulnerable in my life. Despite my growing paranoia, Life carried on and I continued to work. One evening, as I closed the coffee shop alone, I noticed a dark figure standing across the street, shrouded in the dim glow of a street lamp. Panic surged through me and I dropped my keys. The figure didn't move, but its presence sent waves of terror crashing over me. I rushed inside the coffee shop, locked the door and called the police again. By the time they arrived, the figure was gone. They promised to increase patrols even more, but they couldn't guarantee my safety. It was a grim reality I had to accept. As days turned into weeks, the notes kept coming, each one more sinister than the last. The police seemed no closer to catching the stalker, and my life had become a living nightmare. Sleepless nights and constant fear had taken their toll on me, leaving me a shell of my former self. One night, as I lay in bed, the security camera's motion sensor activated. My heart raced as I checked the live feed on my phone. A man, wearing a hooded sweatshirt, 
stood outside my apartment door, staring directly into the camera. He slowly reached out and traced his finger along the lens, smearing it with a grotesque, smiley face. Tears streamed down my face as I watched in horror, realizing that the nightmare was escalating. The man turned and walked away, disappearing into the darkness. I called the police yet again, but the despair had begun to consume me. They assured me they were doing everything they could, but it wasn't enough. In the following weeks, my life unraveled further. I stopped working at the coffee shop, terrified that the stalker might follow me there. My friends grew concerned for my well-being, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched constantly. The notes had turned into graphic threats, promising to visit me in my sleep. One fateful night as I lay in bed, I heard a chilling whisper outside my window. It was the stalker's voice, cold and filled with malice. Camilla, I know you're in there. I've been waiting for this moment. I grabbed my phone and dialed 911, my hands trembling uncontrollably. The operator assured me that the police were on their way, but the stalker's voice grew louder, filled with rage. You can't hide from me, Camila. I'll find you. As the sirens approached, the stalker vanished into the night. The police arrived and I gave them a description of the man's voice, but I knew it wouldn't be enough to catch him. I had become a prisoner in my own life, constantly tormented by the relentless pursuit of a faceless predator. Months passed, and the stalker's presence continued to haunt me. I had moved to a different city, changed my name, and tried to rebuild my life. But the fear lingered like a festering wound. Every unfamiliar face, every unexpected noise sent my heart racing. To this day, I live in constant fear, looking over my shoulder, wondering if the stalker will ever return. The coffee shop that had once been my sanctuary is now a distant memory tainted by the terror that had consumed my life. The notes, the whispers, and the menacing presence of that faceless stalker continue to haunt my dreams, a reminder that some nightmares never truly end. Here is the third story. The fluorescent lights of the mall flickered overhead as I stood behind the jewelry kiosk, meticulously arranging the delicate necklaces and sparkling rings on the glass display. My name is Elizabeth and this small, unassuming booth was my world. I was just an ordinary woman trying to make a living in a place that was anything but ordinary. The mall was a bustling hive of activity, teeming with shoppers searching for the perfect gift, or perhaps a little treat for themselves. I had worked at this kiosk for years, selling beautiful trinkets to countless customers, but what was about to happen on this gloomy afternoon would change everything. The day had started like any other, I greeted customers with a warm smile, offering them my assistance as they examined the glittering jewels before them. But there was one man who caught my eye, a man with a cold, calculating gaze and a sinister aura about him. He was tall and lean, dressed in a black trench coat that seemed out of place amidst the casual mall goers. He approached my kiosk, his eyes fixed on a delicate silver necklace adorned with a sapphire pendant. How much for this? he asked his voice low and raspy. I gave him the price, trying to maintain my friendly demeanor despite the unease that had settled in the pit of my stomach. That's a beautiful choice, I added. His lips curled into a faint smile, revealing yellowed teeth. Indeed, he replied, his eyes never leaving mine. As he reached for his wallet, his hand brushed against mine, sending a shiver down my spine. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but there was something unsettling about this man, something that made me want to retreat from his presence. With the transaction complete, he left the kiosk, but I couldn't shake the feeling that he would return. Hours passed, and the mall gradually emptied as closing time neared. I was beginning to relax, thinking that perhaps my earlier unease had been unwarranted. But then he reappeared, like a phantom emerging from the shadows. This time, he wasn't interested in jewelry. His eyes bore into mine, and his words sent a chill down my spine. I've been watching you, Elizabeth, he whispered, leaning closer. My heart pounded in my chest as I took a step back, my voice quivering. What do you mean? He smirked, and the smile sent a wave of dread crashing over me. I know all about you, Elizabeth. Your routines, your habits, your secrets. Fear coursed through my veins as I fumbled for my phone, intending to call for help. 
but he was faster, snatching it from my trembling hand and tossing it onto the counter. Panic surged as I realized there was no escape. Who are you? I demanded, my voice trembling. He ignored my question, instead reaching into his coat pocket and producing a small velvet box. With deliberate slowness, he opened it, revealing a gleaming silver dagger. My eyes widened in horror. What do you want? I stammered. He stepped closer, the dagger glinting ominously in the dim light. You see, Elizabeth, I've been searching for something, something very precious, and I believe you can help me find it. I couldn't comprehend what he was saying. What could he possibly want from me? I was just a woman working in a jewelry kiosk. But his intentions became horrifyingly clear as he pressed the cold blade against my throat, the metal biting into my skin. I need your blood, he whispered, his breath hot and foul against my ear. It's the key to everything. Tears welled up in my eyes as I realized the magnitude of the danger I was in. I could feel the blade drawing a bead of blood, and I knew I had to act fast. In a desperate, adrenaline-fueled burst of energy, I knocked the dagger from his hand and sprinted for the mall's exit, screaming for help. The mall security arrived just in time, apprehending the man before he could escape. As they took him into custody, I learned that he was a deranged individual who had been stalking me for weeks, convinced that my blood held some supernatural power. It was a chilling revelation that shook me to my core. In the days that followed, I couldn't shake the feeling of terror that had settled over me. I quit my job at the jewelry kiosk and moved to a new town, hoping to leave the nightmare behind. But the memories of that disturbing encounter continued to haunt my every waking moment. I realized that there are dark forces in the world, lurking in the shadows, and sometimes they can come terrifyingly close to tearing our lives apart. That day at the mall had changed me forever, a constant reminder that danger could be lurking just around the corner, even in the most ordinary of places. I had narrowly escaped a fate that I couldn't have imagined in my worst nightmares, and I would forever carry the scars, both physical and emotional, as a reminder of the terrifying encounter with a man who wanted more than jewelry from me. He wanted my very essence, my blood, and my life. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Thank you for listening.